Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. In this session I will be discussing a very important topic in the neurology that is restless leg syndrome. So if you see what exactly is the definition of the restless leg syndrome as the name itself tells you that there is some restlessness within the legs. So it is the disorder which is characterized by restlessness and sensory disturbances within the limbs. Right, sensory disturbances within the limbs. Now, this particular sensory disturbances within the limbs, whichever will occur or whichever will appear, that will lead to an irresistible urge to move the limbs. Okay, so this will lead to an irresistible urge. to move the limbs right that is what you will have in patients with the restless leg syndrome now during which period or during which time does this restless leg restless legness or restlessness occurs within the limbs this will occur especially during the periods of the relaxation Right, especially during the periods of relaxation, you will have this particular sensory disturbances within the limbs. And because of this particular sensory disturbances, the individual will have an irresistible urge to move the limbs. And the next question is, during which part of the day there is urge to do restless leg movements? During which part of the day there is urge to do restless leg movements right the urge occurs exclusively in the evening and at night right exclusively in the evening and at night or it is worse at night than during the day okay so please remember it is more worse at the night than compared to that of day right then followed by that these individuals they will have a periodic limb movements during the sleep so during the night whenever they sleep they have a periodic limb movements Right, they have the periodic limb movements during the sleep, right? And this periodic limb movements will occur and these periodic limb movements, these are the involuntary movements and there will be involuntary flexion at the ankle joint involuntary flexion at the knee joint and involuntary flexion at the hip joint so these involuntary movements will be in the form of flexion movements at the knee ankle and as well as the hip right and that is mainly during the sleep and that particular disturbance is mainly during the nocturnal sleep right and because of this particular disturbance during the nocturnal sleep so these individuals they have decreased sleep during the night and they have excessive daytime somnolence Right, there will be excessive daytime somnolence. Okay, so this is about during which part of the day 
the individual will have this restless leg movements. Now, what are the causes of this particular restless leg syndrome? This particular disorder, it affects almost 1 to 5 percentage of people and what exactly is the cause is not known, right? So it may occur as a primary disorder, right? It may occur as a primary disorder that is called idiopathic. Right, it occurs as a primary disorder that is idiopathic. Now, in which clinical scenarios the restless leg syndrome is associated? One is your primary idiopathic. We don't know what exactly is the cause. But in certain disorders, you have an associated feature that is restless leg syndrome. Now, what are those clinical scenarios? You can have this restless leg syndrome in Parkinsonism, right? And this restless leg syndrome can be seen in patients with iron deficiency anemia, right? IDA stands for iron deficiency anemia. Can be seen in pregnancy, right? And can be seen in individuals with peripheral neuropathy, right? In individuals with peripheral neuropathy. And what type of peripheral neuropathy is that? Like in what etiology is causing peripheral neuropathy? You will have this restless leg syndrome. That is in case of uremic peripheral neuropathy. And as well as diabetic peripheral neuropathy, you have this restless leg syndrome. Right? And this restless leg syndrome, let me tell you, it may also have a hereditary basis. Right, it may also have a hereditary basis and several genetic loci have been associated with the disorder. Right, it may have a genetic basis. Okay, so this is about the etiologies causing the restless leg syndrome. Now, why the levels of ferritin have to be measured in the restless leg syndrome? See, ferritin levels should always be measured. Why? Because in iron deficiency anemia, the ferritin levels, they get reduced. So, the ferritin levels, they are reduced in case of the iron, defic in iron deficiency anemia. That is what you will come across in the restless leg syndrome if it is associated with the iron deficiency anemia. Then what is that you have to do? See, ferritin levels should always be measured. And if it is reduced, treatment with oral, oral iron sulfate in patients with ferritin levels less than or equal to 75 micrograms should be attempted. So if the ferritin levels, if they are reduced to less than or equal to 75 micrograms, right, less than or equal to 75 micrograms per liter, in them you need to give oral iron sulfate right you need to give oral iron sulfate okay so that is the reason why you have to give you have to do the serum ferritin levels and how do you treat these patients with the restless leg syndrome therapy is with non ergot dopamine agonists and what is that non ergot dopamine agonists this particular dopamine agonists they include pramipexol right they include pramipexol and this pramipexol it is given at a dosage of 0 0.125 to 0 0.5 milligrams this has to be given once daily orally Right, this has to be given once daily orally. Right, that is what is the dosage of the pramipexol, which is nothing but it is a non ergot dopamine agonist. Then we have another drug called ropinirole. 
right, ropinirole. So what is the dosage of this particular ropinirole? That is 0.25 to 4 milligrams orally. Right, 0.25 to 4 milligrams orally and it has to be given once daily. Right, and this ropinirole is usually taken bedtime 2 to 3 hours before the bedtime. And another important drug is rotigotin. Right, this is another molecule that can be given in the treatment of restless leg syndrome. And we also have gabapentin. This gabapentin, you should know what is the dosage of this particular gabapentin. Gabapentin and as well as the pregabalin, both of these can be given. But this gabapentin, you should start with 300 milligrams. orally and daily right orally and as well as daily and maximum you can increase the dose approximately up to 1800 milligrams daily right maximum you can give it up to 18 in 1800 milligrams daily depending upon the response and as well as tolerance of the individual then you take this pregabalin pregabalin the dosage is 150 to 300 milligrams orally divided twice to three times daily so dosage is 150 to 300 milligrams the route of administration is oral route of administration you can give this twice daily or thrice daily that is depending upon the response and as well as tolerance of the individual that is about the dosage of gabapentin and as well as pregabalin now what is the what is the role of levodopa in the treatment of the restless leg syndrome levodopa is helpful but may lead to augmentation of the symptoms so so that its use is generally reserved for those who do not respond to other measures okay so this levodopa right if there is no response to other drugs right if there is no response to other drugs then you need to give this particular levodopa but it is helpful but in occasionally in certain group of individuals there can be augmentation of the symptoms as well now what is the role of oxycodone so we have what is called extended release oxycodone naloxone right extended release oxycodone naloxone and what is the dosage of this particular oxycodone that is around 2.5 to 5 milligrams right that is around 2.5 to 5 milligrams and the dosage is 2.5 to 5 milligrams oral route of administration and it can be given twice daily and that will be helpful in patients with severe symptoms or those who are refractory to first line therapies okay so for severe symptoms you can use oxycodone and in those individuals who are refractory to right who are refractory to first line therapies we give this particular oxycodone right so extended release oxycodone naloxone is useful in patients with severe symptoms or those who are refractory to the first line therapies right so that is about restless leg syndrome so to summarize restless leg syndrome it is a sensory disturbance right where the individual will have an irresistible urge to move the limbs especially during the periods of relaxation right and the restless leg syndrome occurs mainly during the evening or at night and this particular etiology include mostly it is idiopathic we don't know what exactly is the cause and it can be or it can be associated with diseases like parkinson's pregnancy iron deficiency anemia or the peripheral neuropathy
Now, why the levels of ferritin has to be checked? Because in order to rule out the iron deficiency anemia, you need to supplement the iron. And how do you treat this restless leg syndrome? Therapy is mainly with non-ergot dopamine agonist, that is pramipexol, ropinarol, rotigotin, or with gabapentin. See, gabapentin, the dosage is 300 milligrams orally, and you have to increase that up to 1800 milligrams daily. And the other alternative drug is pregabalin, that is dosage is 150 to 300 milligrams orally, divided twice to three times daily. And levodopa, if the individual is not responding to other drugs, you can give even levodopa. Oxycodone is another drug which can be given when the individual is having severe symptoms and individual refractory to first-line therapies. That is about your restless leg syndrome. Thank you very much.